Welcome. This episode is going to be a new series. It's going to be the Toronto Blue Jays historical mode. I'm starting in the year 1980, and we're going to do a fun playthrough right to modern day, hopefully, if I can last that long. I don't have everything set in stone to the speeds or anything, but I think we'll go a little bit quicker at the start, and then I think we'll probably slow down in the late 90s when I know the players a little better. I want to start a little bit early to learn some of those 80s players. I thought that would be fun because I didn't really follow baseball. Um, back then, and I don't really know too many of the players from this era, so it's really cool to learn about this stuff. So, what we'll do is just kind of give you a quick overview in this episode of the team, the team, and then kind of sim faster throughout the first year. I'll let the computer do everything for about five or ten years. Uh, as as I know, if I start interfering, I'll just slow down too much and it'll take too long. So the first couple of years, I won't really touch much, which kind of hurts. It always stings a little bit seeing stuff you don't agree with in the Sims, and the computer just starts guys in the wrong positions. But uh, but we'll stick with it, and then uh, we'll kind of do get a couple drafts under our belt here, and then build the organization the way we want. So we'll start off by kind of going over our top players on the team. We have a nice uh, stud young starting pitcher here. He has zero service time. He's on pace for a nice season here. We're in last place. It's the expansion Blue Jays in 1975. So there's a couple years here um, of pretty bad records, like 50 win seasons on this year. We're on pace for in the low 60s. Uh, so it's not too bad. Uh, we should have the first or second overall pick in the draft. So that'll be a lot of fun. We'll go over the draft pool in a second here that got released. Uh, so if you look at our team so far, we have him and then we have a couple of nice young arms. As you'll notice, the uh, we got good old Dave here. Um, he was a really good pitcher for the Jays during the 80s. He doesn't look so uh, fantastic in the game, but he's also he is pretty solid. He has that high movement and control combination. We signed Bo McLaughlin here. Looks like an absolute stud. He doesn't start on the team. Uh, came in, has some high ratings, but hasn't played super well so far. So the pitching's been really rough. We're ranked 14th in the uh, AL in almost every category, which is, I think, last place. Um, back then, I don't think the amount of AL teams is as high. So we got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so we're last place, uh, 14 out of 14. Uh, and pitching in almost every single category, so that's pretty rough. And the defense is just as bad. So definitely um, not a great talent team. We do have somewhat decent of an offense. We are like kind of in the middle of the pack there, which is at least exciting. The offense is led by catcher Ernie Witt. Uh, offensively, he's a pretty solid catcher. Uh, he's like got 91 OPS+, plus, which isn't bad behind the plate. Has a decent approach there. If, as you can see, he's a decent runner for a catcher. Uh, first base DH, we got John Mabry. Mabry was our offensive catalyst this year. The dude is hitting 130 OPS plus, big ISO, and big time home runs. Uh, big, big boom stick there, which is exciting. The shortstop, we got a nice young prospect. He doesn't have a great bat, but he's really solid defensively. He looks like he'll be our long-term shortstop here. He's got really good running. Uh, really good base runner. Got caught quite at stealing quite a few times this year. He's young. Really low ISO, um, but he has some decent numbers across the board. He just needs to improve that contact and hopefully he can give us a little bit more offensive output in the future seasons. Pretty uh, pretty rough season though. Minus 1.7 WPA wins per appearance there. So he's uh, a nice prospect to keep an eye on though. Uh, Estrada is, or not Estrada, sorry. Um, Garcia here has got a nice bat. He doesn't have much power or eye or defense, but he's a pretty solid runner with some pretty high contact skills. So he should be a pretty high batting average guy and give you some, some offense there. Uh, and then on the outfield is... Um, the fun spot here we got the beast al woods in right field here al woods has a big bat big time contact some nice power uh, for young or not that young i guess but nice uh, athletic outfielder there gives us a nice player in right field prospect wise lloyd molesby is one of our top prospects he was a really good player for the jays in the early 80s has some nice ratings right across the board uh, one of the better young prospects in the game we got a uh, pretty solid center fielder here who my uh, computer kept calling to Triple H, so that's one thing I did call him up and four-star him there. And then we do have the big DH bat here, uh, who's had an interesting year. Pretty high ISO uh, for a guy that can play some left field too. Really nice eye and home run power there. And then they actually signed good old Lou Pinella here, which is hilarious. That's why I love seeing all these coaches in this game. I saw Terry Francona, Lou Pinella, a couple guys, Dave Roberts. Uh, a bunch of guys that are playing in the 80s ended up being pretty successful managers later on. Uh, Lou Pinella's having a monster season for us. As you can see in the stats, I don't use some of the traditional ones. I don't use a lot of the counting stats like batting average and doubles and stuff. So if you're not used to it, it might be a little annoying. But once you get used to these ones, I, they're quite a bit better in my opinion. So I use like the WOBA, the weighted on base. <clears throat> kind of weights the extra base hits a little better. So... It's a lot better stat to look at than batting average. So I just do games and plate appearances and WOBA and then how much luck they've had with the batting average balls in play. And then I get home runs, walk percentage, strikeout percentage, ISO, 
and then slugging, and then we got pitch per plate appearance. As you can see, these are all running stats here, UBR and BSR. Um, and you got the ultimate base running stat and the base running value there. And then we got the big time stats here, the OPS, OPS plus, and WPA, and then the war. So uh, those are the stats I like to use for the hitters. Uh, pitching wise, I like to use these ones here. It's a little more traditional um, opponent batting average, opponent on base percentage, and then you get the see how much luck they've had with some, uh, you get the FIP and the WHIP. You can still see the ERA up here, um, and then you see the strikeout and walk percentages and hits per nine, and then wild pitches and the leverage those relievers have been in, and then how many times guys got stolen bases off them, and then their WPA. So I like to use those uh, stat modifiers. And then as you can see here, uh, we'll look at this overall list. Looks like surprisingly Baltimore's at the top of the league. They've got uh, big time numbers out of uh, Crawley here. Crazy, crazy season out of him and just a ridiculous on-base percentage uh, out of him this season. As you can see here, he's killing it with the uh, 434 Woba. An absolute beast right across the board. Somehow his base running is just ridiculous even though he has no base running stats so I don't understand that too much. But just a huge, huge, huge season out of him. Uh, and then you got Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray has big time stats too. Another guy that has right about 30 home runs. Huge offensive output. Uh, and then you got a couple guys here with some nice stats. Singleton has a really, really nice season out of him too. So I don't know what's up with these uh, base running stats for some of these guys. Oh, yeah, it's because he has 20s and everything as a right fielder. Ooh, it's one of the worst base running seasons I've ever seen. Uh, but really interesting uh, season out of them. We got monster center fielder there too named uh, Al Bumbry I've never heard of. But he's just one of the best players in the league with like an eight-war season, 50 stolen bases. So really, really cool kind of uh, never heard of really any of those players. Myself, so really cool learning about some of these guys. Mike Flanagan and Monster Season here, the lefty. Uh, really, really cool stats out of them. So, if you look at our um, the top players in the league, we will go to MLB, we'll go to reports, and we'll go to player rankings. This will show the OSA's top player rankings. So, the best player in the league pretty much is Mike Schmidt, the Phillies legend, third baseman. Uh, back in the 80s, he was an absolute stud. He's on pace for an MVP season. He's 30 years old, with 70 power. He's an elite defensive player, uh, big time contact. Guy just has crazy numbers right across the board. Has uh, 182 OPS plus on pace for 9.4 wars. So it's just a freak, an absolute freak there. George Brett is probably just as good. George Brett is a guy that has over 200, way over 200 ISO, but he has crazy contact skills. On uh, pace for about 20 home runs, 8% walk percentage is crazy for a guy with that much ISO. Uh, amazing avoid K skills. And uh, 180 OPS plus. So just about in the same tier there. Schmidt, uh, just an absolute freak. Both those guys just super elite third baseman. Two best players in the league pretty much. Uh, and then you got Bobby Gritch here. He's a power hitting middle infielder. Uh, big time uh, big time bat there. 150 OPS plus. Almost 8 war. Just another amazing player. Uh, the best young player in baseball looks like it's Tim Raines. Tim Raines has one of the craziest seasons I've ever seen. He, I do the 20 to 80 scale, but I put the no max on, so you can see if it goes well over 80. And the editor can go up to 250, um, which is like a, a 100 or something. So he has pretty much the best speed you'll ever see. Uh, I imagine maybe Billy Hamilton will have like an 85 speed one day, but uh, like 20 or 30 years from now. But as you can see, Tim Raines is one of the fast players to ever play baseball. 95 speed. He, I, I think the highest UBR I've ever seen, ultimate base running, is about 6 or 7. He's at 12. Um, and his base running is at 27. So pretty much the best possible base running you could ever have the amount of value he brings as a base runner is just like uh, like it's just impossible um just crazy to even quantify in those numbers it's hard to believe they're that high i've never seen a numbers even close to that that's just ridiculous so the speed he brings with 80 stolen bases is just, just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I imagine Ricky Henderson will probably be up there too. Uh, two of the best players um, on the base pass ever. He got crazy offensive stats here. He's a 21-year-old, just turned 21, played the most season at 20 years old, started the year as a top prospect. Walks 15% of the time, only strikes at 11. Respectable 134 ISO. Uh, 136 OPS plus and the stats right across the board with some average defense out there in left field. Can also play second base at a decent level. Second base, he's got 50 range. Um, but just an incredible, incredible weapon to have, especially as like a leadoff hitter. And actually probably gets you double-digit home runs most years with about 45, 50 power with that kind of bat. So just um, just an amazing, amazing prospect. So I love that guy's profile. Uh, next up, we have Terry Crowley. I don't know why he's so high up on this list. I guess my scout doesn't like him as much or something. But... Uh, Pretty average profile uh, from a first baseman, just like 45 contact, 55 power. Had a crazy season with over 40 home runs. And then you have Bob Horner, another third baseman, uh, more of a first baseman, I guess. Uh, has a big time bat. And then going down the list here, we have Cecil Cooper. Paul Mulder is in Milwaukee in this uh, save so far. He's uh, 
not had a, a great year. He hasn't been bad at all. I, I shouldn't say that at all. He's a 160 OPS plus. Must be really bad defensively. Um, I don't know what why his OPS or his WAR isn't higher. But uh, oh, he's only played 78 games. That's why. So he missed about half the year. But uh, yeah, pretty fantastic uh, ratings there for second baseman hitting wise. And then you can see Ricky Henderson is on this list too. Uh, he's right up there with 85 speed. Also, the guy is 91 and on pace for 98 stolen bases. But as you can see, the UBR on Tim Raines was like 12, and it's like one on Ricky Henderson. So not nearly uh, as effective as a base runner at this point in his career yet. Um, but the stats are there, even though he has more stolen bases. So it should be uh, kind of run for those guys for stolen bases for the next decade, which is really cool. But Ricky Henderson should put up some monster seasons. He's got a crazy eye. It's actually maxed out above 80 on the 2080 scale there for potential. So with that kind of... Um, Ability to get on base and that kind of speed is just going to be absolute nightmare to play against. You're going to, if you're in that division, you're going to need a good catcher. Gary Carter probably actually is like the best player in baseball right now, uh, ratings wise. He's number 20 on this list, but in my personal opinion, he'd probably be like right up there, number one or two. Uh, that kind of offensive profile catcher with 65 void K, 65 power, he should hit like probably should hit like 30 bombs a year. He only had 16 this year. I don't know if that stadium's tougher to hit home runs in, but uh, yeah, just absolute weapon at catcher with 75 ability, 70 catcher arm. Pretty much brings you like a Adley Rushman in current times uh, profile there. Just an amazing, amazing player. Uh, surprised he's that far down on the list. So, and then at pitcher wise, you have Steve Carlton's right up here, an absolute monster for Philly. The lefty just had a huge season. Uh, JP Richard is such a sad story. I never heard of this guy. Like I said, I don't know the '80s uh, baseball too well. I googled him. And then, of course, it's like, how is a guy that I've never heard of a guy six eight with that kind of stuff and movement and crazy stats? And then it turns out he had like a stroke the next year in real life in 1988, 1981. Never really recovered too well. Couldn't really play at a high level anymore. Ended up homeless in the 90s and all this stuff. So it's really sad. But that's why this historical will be really cool. Teach me some of the history and anyone watching. Um, just an incredible story of how talented this guy was and really fell off, which is uh, – of life i guess but just amazing amazing talent when he was in his prime so it's too bad to see but that's the cool thing about the historicals it won't follow that i don't think i think he'll just keep playing because once you start it kind of goes off um based on the the individual game i don't think it'll force them to retire the actual years they retired so hopefully we can see what would happen with jp richard and uh he will if he got another four or five really good years um this guy just had some crazy seasons and really peaked right at the end of his uh, 20s here. At 28 years old, 27 years old, he started peaking really. Just kept getting better, 4 to 6 to 8 to 10 war. And then this season he had about 6.5 war. So it's just really cool to see uh, see how long he can hang on for and if he can be like the best pitcher in baseball for a few seasons, which is really cool. And then we got uh, Gullickson here, 21 years old. Holy smokes. Um, just an amazing profile. The guy has 8 war, uh, crazy movement stats, really, really good uh, control and Big time strikeout guy with three pitches. And as you can see, the velocity is a lot lower on these guys, so the pitch ratings um, are going to no, not be very high in this whole save for like the entire 80s. Probably all like the top guys will have like 55 and 60 pitches. Very rare to have a guy have like super high, like 70 pitches. Uh, like this guy, that changeup's super good. That's the one pitch changeup you can get super high even without big velocity. But this guy's probably got as big a velocity as there is in the game, pretty much at 95 as a starting pitcher. Uh, really big, really good player there. So I won't go on for too long. Uh, the last thing I'll show you is kind of the draft class here. The draft class is um, pretty loaded uh, every year in these, which is cool to see. I know there's some big-time names that you uh, probably recognize, like Cal Ripken Jr. Mike Witt's probably the top pitcher in the draft. Um, and then if you look at the batters here, you got Cal Ripken, just an absolute monster, 20 years old. The guy has 60 range. Looks like he has a great second base profile with a little weaker arm and probably doesn't quite have the range for shortstop. Uh, could be a third baseman, but uh, probably be best suited at second base, in my opinion. The guy's 6'4", 225, just a monster. And uh, I'd imagine I'd probably go with him if I get the first overall pick because you know he'll have that elite durability rating. So just be probably like maxed out on the, on the durability rating, hopefully, and be able to give you like 160 games for like 15 seasons and should be an absolute beast with 60 current power. Just a crazy, crazy player. Uh, Hall of Famer and all that jazz. And then we got some other big names in this draft. You got George Bell is a big name. This guy has some crazy ratings. It'd be really hard to pass on that even if – Traditionally, you don't really want to go first baseman first overall, but having a guy that uh, could step in the majors right at 20 years old and be your best hitter for like a decade is pretty appealing. The guy has pretty good range and uh, defensive stats at first base also. Uh, really good player. Played for the Twins his whole life in real life, and just knows he's also from Minnesota. So really cool, but uh, yeah, really tough to pass on a 75-I, 65-contact, 65-power guy. That's fully developed. Um, absolute freak. 
even if there is some names like Cal Ripken above him. Uh, and then you also have some uh, big-time names. Terry Francona, um, Chili Davis, probably a top-ranked player in the draft based on his defense. Play like a right field, left field, center field, really anywhere you want out there with some elite speed, elite base running, big-time power, big contact, pretty much playing the pros like right away there with his current ratings. Just an uh, amazing player there too. So a lot of tough uh, decisions at the top of that draft. Pat Tabler. Uh, there's a bunch of names there that um, – Tough to pass on, but I know Cal Ripken really is right at the top of that list for me. But you got a catcher with 65 contact here. Pretty decent defense there. Good base runner. Huge approach rating. So I pulled it up on my Excel document here. Um, I exported all the info and kind of ranked them and his stuff. And as you can see here, you can kind of sort by whatever category you want. I got hit potential, which is just like an average of their all the main hit tools kind of melded together. Exit velocity is like their contact and power um, potentials disciplines like the avoid k and i and so you can kind of like see everything important here and then i got all the pitcher stuff here uh you can sort by current ratings or you can sort by pitch potential see the amount of um pitches they have there at least 50 rated and then 60 rated 70 rated and then i got all the important information you can see here the velo all the stats the lefty or righty um kind of pre-determines their position based on uh, their stamina and all that stuff and the formula i have in the other page so kind of gives you a little bit of a help here with the draft, uh, looking at some of this stuff. So, and then you kind of sort it by position here, starting pitcher, reliever, and all that. So, really cool uh, draft class here. So, we'll probably, uh, I'll sim to that in the next episode. I'll probably sim to the end of the year and we'll do the draft and some free agency and stuff and see what's going on there. That'll be it for this episode. Cheers.